Hey folks, this is Tracy with Scrappy's Rustics. Y'all, I am really excited to show you this video and walk you through it. It's such an easy process, pretty inexpensive process, but to me, it looks expensive. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like <clears throat> when Halloween, I, there to me, there are no rules when it comes to creating. However, I feel like Halloween just gives you that extra oomph of anything goes. Bright colors, wild colors. It, it just goes. It just goes. Now that looks like a real book now, doesn't y'all? That is a wood book. And I'm going to show you, <coughs> excuse me, how I achieved these looks. This video is a little lengthy. However, you can see there's a lot going on with this piece. So you're going to learn a lot of, or you may already know, maybe brush up your skills, but you're going to learn some new skill sets and have another feather in your cap, perhaps. Most of this stuff is from the Dollar Tree, including those uh, signs, those metal signs. It was a two pack of spiders. We're gonna use Pentart Decoupage Ultra Matte. You're gonna need a pencil. You do not need a wood box. However, a paper mache box, a wood box, even a hard covered box would work. But what you will need to achieve this look is tissue paper or napkin plies. So <clears throat> I'm just putting my stuff on the top of the book. Um, so I know how big to make my spider web. I'm just using a piece of cardboard to help me make some straight lines um, for my spider web that we're going to do in hot glue. Now I realize this time of year, some stores do not have any Halloween out. This is from my stash from last year and I'm slowly learning that I need to have a little bit of something, um, get it the, the year before so I have it ready before the stuff even hits you know, if I want to start making stuff before it even hits the store. So I just sketched it out in pencil. Um, if you're good and you can draw, then you probably don't even need to do that. Um, if you don't have any of these embellishments, you can just solely use hot glue. And um, we're going to do this again in our subscription group. And what I've told the ladies is let's use what we have. Let's think out of the box. Anything flat, any flat embellishment, um, will work and the flatter the better to, to achieve this overall look um, if you don't have anything flat you could just simply use hot glue but you could do shabby chic you could do flowers you could do goth you could do halloween you could do christmas there's so many ways you could take this uh, this technique that we're going to do and make it your own and just by using stuff that you have in your stash already or stuff that you like because the next one I want to make I love this so much that I want to make it like an all year round piece so I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue like just kind of slobbering it on there just to give me a little bit more texture um and mind you of course it's hot glue the metal sign does get hot so just be mindful of that if you do that um but I want to create a piece that I can keep out year round because it was so much fun and it really I think it really came out good um, yeah, it's a little hot there. I had to put it on the cardboard. Um, I'm going to adhere it with Pentart Heavy Body Gel, but I think this time I'm going to do like a vintage antique style um, book. And I might use a hard covered book. I'm not sure because that would work as well. However, you might have to manipulate your pages and kind of tape them together um, for the process that we do. But it already has pages. So just by dirtying up the real pages might work just as well. So I'm pretty excited to show you this technique and show you um, how I achieved my book pages. That was a lot of fun. And as a matter of fact, I bought a comb from the Dollar Tree, a black one, you know, the generic ones. I don't know, like a year ago, I've, I have know it was in my drawer forever. I go to use it. Yeah, it, it's gone. I have no idea where it went. Like I've never used it and I know it's been in the same place and I go to get it and it's, it's gone. So I've got my tissue paper and I've crumpled it up. I'm using DIY patina. You can use whatever medium of your choice, Mod Podge, whatever you got. And I, the only thing I'm trying to keep straight is right where the, um, sorry about that, right where the book opens. I'm trying to um, keep that kind of straight. Now I'm using a chip brush because I'm trying to get the tissue paper down into like the O and all the, all the lower points. Um, this is a new angle that I'm trying to video on to get a better a clearer video and a um, in the right format. So sorry you're seeing all my junk on the side there. It's not too bad, <laughs> but uh, good thing I didn't go the other way. So I'm trying this format. That's why I'm on the side instead of straight down. So we'll see how this goes over. The quality of the video, I mean, I'm fast here, so it looks a little weird, but um, it, I think overall it, it actually did come out in 4D. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm again, I'm just using my um, chip brush 
to push everything down into place. And then I'm going over the top again with another layer of the DIY patina, um, just so my paint will go on nicely. Um, I don't know if the second layer is necessary. I just thought it's tissue paper. The more protection it gets. Look at all that texture, y'all. Now you can you can go ahead. You want if you're a real texture junkie and you want more, put more tissue paper on there or crumple a big wad of it up. Whatever you want to do, you can do. So these bag of rings came from the Dollar Tree last year as well. It's like bats and skulls, I think, or something like that. So the bats laid the flattest. So that's what I decided to do. I cut the ring part up. My, my suggestion to you is anything that lays, that will glue down the flattest, will, you'll have the easiest results. Even like in the spooky, the P and the O's, you know, the paper was lifting up a little. Like if I really stuck my finger in there hard, it would probably go through the paper. Um, but the flatter, the better. And I think that that extra layer of medium on there does help with that as well. But um, just be mindful if you do something like this, uh, the flatter, the better uh, your results will be. And again, if you don't have any of this stuff, just hold, just use hot glue. I mean, it works as anything that's raised is basically what you're going after. So I just make my way around here on, and I decided it needed something in between the bats and I wasn't sure. So I just used two half beads. Um, I was going to put them on the front, but it just, I don't know, it didn't look right. No matter where I placed them or whatnot. And I thought, I got so much going on in the front anyways. And once we, you know, embellish it with the paint and the wax, you know, it's 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 going to be a party in itself. So the back I just did plain. See all that texture there? Again, if you want more, just add another layer. Add another layer of tissue paper or your napkin ply, whatever you have. There's our spider. So I thought, because he's like fuzzy kind of, and I wasn't sure. I'm going to wax all this stuff in the end with colored waxes. And I wasn't sure how the wax would take um, on the fuzzy part. So I should have tested it first on the on his behind or his bottom side, but I didn't. So I just painted him with acrylic paint uh, black <clears throat> just to give me another layer of protection. And, and I knew that the wax would be fine on the acrylic paint. So I'm just taping off. Um, the sides of the inside of the book because we're going to make the book pages right now and we're going to use fiber paste. You could use heavy body gel, you could use um, modeling paste, texture paste, anything that has a little oomph to it. You know, you might even be able to get away with salt wash if you made it thick enough. Um, it'd be a little bumpy, but it would work. Um, I don't know if baking soda and chalk paint like would work you'd have to use an awful lot of baking soda because you the thickness of this is you want grooves to stay in there <clears throat> so I'm just putting on a not a real thick coat but thick enough so you don't see the wood part and thick enough kind of like icing a cake but not a chocolate cake because chocolate cake I like extra icing so <laughs> Uh, you know, just not too thick. So I don't know where my black comb is. So I have these pumpkin little serrated things that help you help you um, cut out a pumpkin more d delicately or intricately. So I'm just riding this down it because I'm trying to make faux page lines. It ended up working out really great. If you don't have anything like this, you could use a steak knife. Uh, you could even use a skewer, but you'd have to do like a whole bunch of lines. But just think anything like that just to give you what appears to be page lines. And it's hard to see because it's white, but once you see the coloring go on there, it'll it'll come to life. Um, I did, the fiber paste actually kind of looks, I mean, it has fibers in it. So it kind of resembles paper in a way. So I think that was the good choice to use. So here's where we have it. It's all dry. I let it sit overnight <clears throat> and it's all dried up and ready to go. Actually, I don't think I let it sit overnight. We're not we're not in the next day yet, I don't think. <laughs> we're still on the same day. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I still got a little bit of this cold. So we're going to paint it with home decor black chalk paint. Um, I believe we only do one full coat. That For whatever reason, that black chalk paint covers really nicely. But then I was showing you, like, if you dry brushed it, that's kind of a cool look, too. Oh, I guess I sped it up too much. So there's a close-up so you can see how much texture we got going on here. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to film and paint at the same time. Man, it's so confusing because it's it's so off. <laughs> you put your paintbrush down, but you're not even near your project. So I just wanted to give you a little close-up there of uh, all that yummy texture. So there she is. Yes, I did one coat, 
and of all black chalk paint. And do I still have the tape on there? No. So um, that's how she looks right now. Now you can just imagine when we uh, add all the goods, which you saw in the beginning. So we can't leave the inside empty. That's, you know, you got to do something with that. So, um, oh, I guess I'm going to seal it first with, um, oh, no, we're going to, oh, yeah. So I seal, I seal <laughs> the entire book with the Pentart Ultra Mat and I seal the spider. I should have not sealed the spider because it dried looking crazy. I ended up, um, you could see it, it just stayed white. So I ended up painting black over the spider again and um, I just went over the, with the wax right over the acrylic paint on the spider. So I seal the whole project because we are going to go over it with wax. Um, so now this thing's got three coats of sealer on it. <laughs> Four maybe. I don't even know. So it's looking pretty good. Y'all, this was such a fun project. Um, and I really love the idea of, yeah, see the white on there? So I ended up just painting him black. I love the idea of making a year-round piece. Like, I just feel like it's, there's so many options. You could do a kid's room theme. Um, just I don't know. I just feel like it's, it, it could be a fun thing and it doesn't have to be a book. Like I said, you could do this on bottles. Um, it's really the tissue paper that kind of brings this whole project together. So we're going to decoupage this napkin. Um, we do have a few of those napkins left on the website, scrappiesrustics.com. Um, so I'm just going to use that whole napkin. I thought it was appropriate. Uh, the theme looked good. It was a repeating pattern and it, it fit the whole napkin just about fit in the top and the bottom and um, just decoupage that. So I'm just using my painter's tape. I swore there was another ply on there, but there wasn't. It's just a thick napkin, but I swore there was. I ended up ripping it, but <laughs> it's okay. It worked out. So again, I'm gonna use my uh, DIY patina to put that down, get that decoupage down for us, and um, just, just seal the piece off. And you can actually see the black border because I didn't bother painting white on the wood part because I didn't mind the contrast, but it kind of looks cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. It kind of looks cool um, with the black border. So I'm kind of, you can barely see it, but it does look neat. So the black border you can see uh, behind your decoupage. So I sealed that in both sides and uh, our piece is done for now. Now I get excited to do the, uh, the fun part. The fun part is embellishing this. Oh, I guess I didn't seal it yet. Cause, oh, because I'm going to use a decoupage. I like to use a decoupage ultra matte. De Pentart Decoupage Ultra Matte because it is truly that. Look how matte it is. It's like I didn't even do anything. So there she is. She is ready to be prettied up. And I had such a good time. If I sped a lot of this up and cut a lot of it out, but I spent some time putting these colored waxes on there. And man, so much fun. So here comes our wax paste. These are Pentart. That's turquoise. That is honey gold. That is magenta, I believe. Magenta. These are all metallic waxes. That is rose gold. Almost all of them are metallic. That's umber. That is not metallic. That is antique gold. That's a little bit metallic. And then look at those. Green and purple. Woo! Y'all. Those don't scream Halloween. I don't know what does. And then we're going to use the uh, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Soot. Soot in. I don't know what the other one is. And my pat. I wasn't sure if this was going to work. Because this is what we're going to... Um, we're going to try to make the book pages out of is the, the ox. And look at that bit of honey changed their labels. Y'all <laughs> I was, eat, I was chowing down on them. I don't know. I ate like 30 of them. My husband got me a, I don't know, a two pound bag or a pound and a half bag. Oh man. And, and a two pound bag of peach rings. But I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see bit of honey change their, <laughs> their wrappers to the old school. So that is the color suit soot. And there's so much texture on these pages. Oh, it's so great. And I, or like I said, I wasn't sure <clears throat> if the, the dioxide, dioxide, no, the oxide was going to work. So I just started with the soot and worked my way around and it did work. It worked great. I don't know if I'd use black in every project to start out with, but I thought black was appropriate in this scenario because of the colors we have going on. And so that, that color is like a, I want to say it's, I can't remember what one that is, but it's like a brownish or brownish color. And um, I'm just using a little eyeshadow thing to get in where that big, um, uh, what do you call it? The thing that spreads your oxide around. I'm using an eye makeup uh, eyeshadow <laughs> pad to get in the little 
areas that the big thing could not. So I do that to all three sides. And now, y'all, I did not know what I was doing. I have never done anything with wax, colored wax on this scale. But, man, I will be from now on because it was so much fun. It, it was just, just keep putting it on and see what happens. Keep putting it on and see what happens. And these, these smell amazing because they're made with orange oil. And these are all Pentart products as well. We have those on our website. We got everything on the website, y'all. Everything, everything. So... I don't know about you, but usually when I'm doing something, paint wash, wax, or whatever, I, I, I'm not 100% confident. I always like to do it on the bottom or somewhere you can't see. I start out real slow because I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. So once I get going and I see that it's going to work and I get the confidence, then I'm like, okay, let's go. But I always start out slow and um, just, just work my way up to like, okay, th this is it. This is how it's going to work. And I wasn't sure, you know, am I going to do the whole spider turquoise? This kind of just took on a life of its own. And ultimately, I think everything ended up with every color that you see there on the table. <laughs> and it was just so much fun. And it really took to the spider uh, after all the layers I put on him. But it took to him pretty well. My fingers were uh, all different colors, uh, but it was great. It was great. I had a great time to, <laughs> doing it. There's something about working with your raw hands on with your product that uh, it's just a feeling you can't get anywhere else. And the spider came out cool. So, And there are two pack at the Dollar Tree uh, when the, Halloween does come out. But, oh, sorry, I just hit my phone. So a Christmas uh, book would be cool. Um, I'm really wanting to do an antique vintage one. I think that's what I'm going to do. But I don't know what I'm going to use for embellishments. i got to think about this one. And I probably won't use wild colors. Look at him. He's every color. Look how cool he looks. It would look cool just to do spiders. You don't even have to do the book. <laughs> just do spiders. So there's all the pages done. Everything is done except for our colored wax. Can you see all the, the, the like faux pages we made? Pretty neat. Now let me give you a tip. When you're using pastes of any kind... And you're only hitting the high points and you're using your finger. Your best bet is to rub it off on a paper towel and try to get that whatever it is you're using just on the flat of your finger. It's because if you get it on your sides, you'll end up it'll end up coming off on your, your surface where you don't want it. So try to get the product as flat as you can on your fingertip and um, try to keep your finger flat. Again, I'm not sure of myself, <clears throat> so I'm starting out light. And um, with this product, the more layers you add, the darker it gets. Look how cool that's starting to look already. I love it. And the tissue paper on top of all of this really is, to me, what brings this whole project together. Um, it just gives it that look that you really can't get anywhere else. Yes, you could use a fiber paste or um, a modeling paste or whatever, but um, I think the dry time and the amount of effort it would take to, um, look how cool that looks. And now you can see the, all the glue I put on there. The amount of effort it would take and the amount of product, um, I think the tissue paper or a napkin ply is definitely the most efficient way um, to achieve this look. And um, again, it was just, it was such a, it was such a fun, fun thing. This video is long, but like I said, there's a lot going on, a lot of different techniques we've done in here. So I'm hoping if anything, you picked up something new, at least one little thing. Um, I end up putting every single color on the back. I just kind of went with it. I just kind of kept going and went with it. And this is what I ended up with. The antique gold ended up in there as well because I ended up putting in the book pages um, just to add a little extra because the brown and uh, black weren't quite enough and there's the end piece <clears throat> and uh just putting a little on our half what are they half beads half wood beads um see i think anything higher than that half wood bead if you were to try to cover it with a tissue paper would probably rip on you look how cool he looks and there we have it i ended up putting a little bit more of everything here and there the antique gold in there and, uh, y'all, I went to town. I went to town, and I had to scrub my fingers. Didn't do anything else in the inside. Left that as is. That way you can actually use it. But the book, the pages itself, I love that. I love that part. I think that was really cool. So now I'm trying to see where we're going to place that guy. We're going to use the Pentart Heavy Body Gel. The spider only makes contact, I think, in his rear end and then the bottom of his feet. So that's what I'm kind of checking out. So I'm just going to put a little dab on each end of his little toes and his bum and uh, hold it down there for a minute. The heavy body gel 
is an excellent um, type of glue to use um, on difficult and heavy things. Y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. Please share. Please uh, follow me if you're not already. Comment. If you're on YouTube, please uh, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload in new videos. And thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to inspire you again in my next video. And look how cool that looks, y'all. I am like in love with this. It was such a fun project. Look how cool. See you in the next video.